Let's go back up and let's edit count.shell. Echo file name, grep revision file name, and then grep v species pipe to grep v revision pipe to cut and so forth. What did I just do? Well, I'm going to print the date and the version of the script right at the top of my output. And then for each file, I'm going to give you the file name and then the revision number of that file on a separate line. And then I'm going to take out species and I'm going to take out the revision number. I grep v species from file name will throw away all of the lines that contain the word species. And then I'm going to throw away all the lines that contain revision. And then I'm going to do my cut, sort, unique, and sort. Now, as you can see, the script is getting pretty long. It has overflowed. So I'm going to use backslash to break the line. And once I start doing this, it actually makes the whole thing a little bit easier to read. Because now, when you look at the command, you'll see grep. The backslash at the end of the line means this isn't really the end of the line. Just stitch this and the next line together. So you can see all the pipe stages laid out separately. And you can just read across under the grep and read down the vertical bars to see what all the commands are. So this is a nice way to say, no, look, your eye can now see that this is a group of commands and each command is on a line of its own, which makes it more readable. When I'm writing shell commands, I usually, but not always, do it this way right from the start. If I've only got a couple of commands in a pipe, I will just put them side by side. But as soon as I've got enough that I actually have to stop and read it carefully, I will break them like this so that my eye can see them more easily. First one is getting rid of lines that have the word species. Second one is getting rid of lines that have the word revision. Third one is getting that middle column. Fourth one is sorting the species names. Fifth one is getting rid of duplicates and counting. And the last one is doing a reverse numeric sort. What I've done is break up what I want to accomplish into a series of function applications. This is f of g of h of x in mathematical terms. It just is written as h of x pipe to g pipe to f. So save that and exit. Okay, at the top, there's the date. There's which version of this script it is. Here's a file name and its revision number. Here's a file name and its revision number. Here's a file name and its revision number. Here's a file name and its revision number, and then its output. Okay, this is progress. Can I do better? Yes, I think I can. I don't think it matters what day I run the script, as long as I know which version of the script I've got. So I'm going to take that date command out. Because what I really care about is which version of the script, not what day the output was created. I'm probably going to add this output to version control anyway, and that will give me a record of when it was created. So let's do that and change. Okay, I've taken out the date command and I'm now getting the revision and I've broken this up into multiple lines. Hmm, that's a lot of changes, you know? That's too many changes. I'm not comfortable with this. Let's go back into count.shell. And I should commit just this change. This is one logical change. Uh, showing revisions of data files as we are processing. Okay, now nano count.shell. Okay, now let's run it again. Okay, so I got rid of the date command at the top, SVN commit, no longer displaying date for each set of output. All we really needed was the revision of the count.shell script anyway. Now this might seem like a trivial thing, I've changed one line. But it's one thought, it's one step in the development process, so I do the commit. If somebody is doing an update, they will get all of the commits that have happened since their last update in one batch. But if they want to break it down and see what the changes were, 
seeing five commits, each with its own comment, each of which does one thing, allows you to chunk up the history and make sense of it a lot more easily than seeing one revision that does five logically separated things. One line changes are fine. What you want is commits that match to logical steps in the evolution of the program. So let's go back into the data directory and nano carla 2011.txt. Let's change this to dollar ID. I don't have to get rid of the 10 because that will be overwritten when I do the commit. Okay. So I'm just changing all four files. And yes, there is a way to automate this. Any reasonably powerful editor like Emacs or Vim will let you do the same thing to a whole bunch of different files, but I'm not going to show you those tools today. But the fact that I'm typing the same thing into several different files should ring your alarm bells. You should realize that, yeah, there's got to be a way to automate this because programmers are lazy. Now, subversion prop set SVN keywords to be ID on star.txt using the ID keyword instead of the revision keyword for data files. Okay, all those changes are in. Grep ID and star.txt. Good, I've got four lines with reasonable IDs. They're all now revision 13. Now, if I now run count.shell, uh-oh, I made a mistake. The mistake I made was I changed what was in the data files, but I didn't make the corresponding change in the script. Now, the script isn't showing me the revisions for the data files because it's looking for the word revision and that's not there. I should have changed the script at the same time as I changed the data files so that it was one logical change. This doesn't look incorrect. And in fact, it's not broken. There's still a lot of useful data here. But if you're changing data formats, you should change the code that matches those data formats and vice versa. So let's go into our script. And I no longer need to grep for the file name. I just grep for the ID because that will include the file name. The ID is the whole long string. But here, I need to get rid of ID as well as getting inside my pipeline as well as printing it separately. Right? I had two places where I was using the word revision. Now, bash count.shell. I have two places where I'm using the word ID. So, there's count.shell. And then for each of the data files, I can see Here's the data file and here's the output. Here's the ID of the data file, here's the output. So now I know what program produced this and what data files it processed. Not just the names, but the exact versions. Now I've got provenance. Now I should be able to go back, check things out of version control, and exactly reproduce this output. That's science.